Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Haley Bush, who is the outreach director of A Thousand Friends of Florida. And if you haven't heard of them before, they are an advocacy organization that wants to save special places and build better communities in Florida. And they've been doing that since 1986. And if you're new here into this podcast, you definitely want to press subscribe, either on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to talk about how to make the future better in Florida. So Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. So how would you describe A Thousand Friends of, of Florida for someone that is not familiar with your organization? We are a smart growth nonprofit in Florida. We operate statewide and we have a two pronged approach to what we do. So we advocate for saving special places, building better communities, as you mentioned. And I'll back up a little bit and say, you know, for those that maybe on an, an international listener here, and you've heard of Florida before, you might know us for our beaches, maybe, you know, Orlando and Disney World or Miami, but alligators. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the alligators. I've been there. I've been there. (laughs) You've been there. Good. Well, so there's a lot more to Florida besides the alligators, Miami, Disney World. And we advocate for saving the, the old Florida, the unknown parts of Florida, um, our natural lands, waters, as you mentioned, alligators, we have those. We also have panthers. We have an incredible array of uh, bird species, migratory and those that live here year round. Um, so incredible wildlife, incredibly diverse ecosystems too. We've got swamps, mangroves, um, prairie land, flatland. Um, we're very diverse from the, the very panhandle all the way down to the Miami and Everglades part of the state. So I'd say to your, you know, anyone who's never been to Florida, we're so much more than just sandy white beaches. Um, and so our organization, along with many other conservation groups in Florida, we advocate for all of those special places. Um, and I encourage those, to, you know, if you get a chance to come and you're, maybe you're flying into Orlando or Miami, please take a chance and visit some of the other parts of our state. Now, the building better community side of what we do, we advocate for building vibrant, walkable, sustainable, livable communities that, um, you know, every Floridian ought to have the chance to help shape the character and future of their community. We are a very fast growing state. Um, On average, 830 people come here per day, which in one year, that's the size of the city of Orlando moving to Florida. So a lot of people come here, live here, settle settle here either for, for retirement or setting up, you know, a new family. And so the building better communities side of things, we really are, we encourage citizens to be advocates for their own future, future of their community. And I can dig into that a little bit more too. I would love to learn more about that. But before, let's start with the conservation side, because obviously if there's a need for conservation, there's also some kind of danger, something that is threatening these special places. So what are the biggest risks as you see it to, uh, to Florida? Straight away, I'd say just we are rapidly developing and that is fueled by all these people wanting to come live to live in Florida. So for all the reasons I just said, we're a a very appealing place to live. I mean, in the country right now, there's awful weather, snowstorms, below freezing temperatures. And in Florida, just the other day, I was out at the beach. Um, It's an appealing place to be. So I think the biggest threat to our natural lands and our waters is Um, the impacts of development. So places are getting sold, paved over. Um, When you pave over a natural land, there's water quality implications, stormwater runoff, 
Um, everything is connected ecologically. So that's the biggest threat um, in a nutshell is overdevelopment, overpopulation. When I heard you describe the nature and also see the sunlight coming through your face here, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm thinking to myself, why am I doing in Sweden? It's horrible outside. Like, why shouldn't I? Re- I'm a nice guy. Why shouldn't I retire in Florida? And that brings me to my next question. Like, okay, so people are moving to Florida for a reason. People want to be there. Like, shouldn't you, you know, expand? And so are you trying to stop that expansion or are you um, trying to make it in a smarter way? That's a very good question because we are not anti-development and we welcome people to our state. Um, you know, some people might personally want to put up a wall and say, no, don't come. But we, we encourage people to come see Florida for what it is. And I think you touched on the important part of that is it just has to be more thoughtful at the state level and at the local government level, too. Um, we can develop in a smarter way, and that means more compact development. I think in the United States versus other countries, we have so much land in, in the U.S. Um, it, it, we've had this kind of Wild West style of development where we just keep expanding our, our footprint at the city and, and local level and just eating up more natural land. And those lands where it might have been used for agriculture or they were untouched wild lands. Um, and the bigger footprint we have the harder it is on our pocketbook, on local government, taxpayer money to, to provide the infrastructure and services to that greater footprint. Um, so we're what we're trying to tell folks when they do wanna to come to Florida and set up here is we encourage you to, to take a harder look at where you're living. And you might be, you might have a lower cost of living and in the short term, that's great. And you know, you'll, you'll be happy, you'll be living in the sunshine here, but in the long term, when we think about the impact on our community as a whole, right, on our school systems, on the families who live here, there are all these quality of life things that we think will, will deteriorate. So you might have a greater uh, commute to work, traffic congestion will increase. We're very auto dependent in Florida and in much of the United States. So that's those are the quality of life factors that are affected when we grow like this. And it's a challenge to communicate that to people who want to come here and retire. Um, They're not thinking about their kids going to school here. Um, So we welcome you to come to answer your question, but um, we ask people to think more quickly about where they decide to live. Yeah. And I I can see the challenge in that if people are coming because they want to retire, maybe they don't want to live so close to other people. And maybe they don't care about the next 60 years. So I I can see how that's a hard sell to make. So where are you aiming to have influence then? What is your approach? That's a good point. So we are statewide. We focus at the state government level. Um, We do work at the county and local government level across the state and encourage county locally elected officials to make smarter growth and development decisions, but ultimately in a community like you just described, where they might might not have an interest in uh, developing in the most wise way. We focus at the state level, our state house and um, Senate representatives. Um, And once upon a time, about over 10 years ago, Florida used to have a department of community affairs and that department at the state and state agency they were the, the sole growth management organization and they took a harder look at what local governments were doing and could nudge local governments to make smarter decisions. And that's an approach we still firmly believe in and that's what we try to continue to do. Although to be really frank with you, it's been tough the past 10 years because that agency was abolished um, in a previous, uh, uh, with, with the previous governor. So <laughs> we are, find ourselves constantly on the defense as a statewide organization, not to get, you know, doom and gloom here, but um, we're constantly trying to claw back <laughs> any any legislation that might undo, further undo um, growth management and development um, regulations. So that's our approach. That's what we continue to do. So the, the bulk of our, you know, work is at the state level, but we still continue to work with county and local governments as well. Beautiful. And, you know, sometimes you have to realize that stuff is going the wrong way and it's good that someone is doing something to uh, stop that kind of development. So I, I see that as highly important. 
Now, you had a vision for Florida in 2070. What does that mean for, uh, for you guys? Well, it started with us wanting to raise the alarm about what 2070, the year 2070, could look like if we continued to develop in this manner. So that report, that study that you're referencing, we published that in 2016. We worked with um, one of the large research universities here, the University of Florida, um, and they worked with us and along with the Department of Agriculture. And we compiled this report that did different population projections um, one, if we continue to develop and grow, population growth rate continued as is, you know, baseline. Um, trend was if things continued as they were and we looked ahead and saw this is not good. We compared the amount of wild land, conservation lands that would be threatened by development. So we did maps of the whole state of Florida and saw the encroachment of green, you know, green space get, was lost more development. Um, and we also looked pretty critically at what this meant for our water supply, our water resources. So one of the impacts of development anywhere you are is you're stressing your, your natural, your water source, right? Your potable water, the water folks need to flush their toilets, water their lawns, all the things that, you know, people need water or use water for. Um, and by 2070, we could deplete, I believe it's, uh, our, our water demand will more than double by 2070 if we continue the way we are now. And so there's 21.3 million people in Florida right now, water demand doubling. We rely on an aquifer in Florida. Um, and when you deplete an aquifer, rivers stop flowing, springs stop flowing. Um, you can have sinkholes across the state. It's pretty apocalyptic if you think about it. Hmm. Um, so that 2070 project, um, we've used that in much of our programming today. We hold workshops across the state in different counties that are interested in partnering with us um, and can extrapolate that state data and extrapolate it to the county local government level and show a, a more detailed picture of what specific development trends look like um, within different counties. Got it. So is there some project you're working on right now that you're in particularly uh, engaged in and excited about? Yes. One of my colleagues is especially tuned in on this. Um, we've been following quite closely this toll road proposal um, that would span the entire state. So in 2018, 2019, I believe, um, a law was passed that said we are going to build three major roadways spanning the entire western part of our state, going from South Florida all the way up to the Florida-Georgia border. And there's a couple of problems with that. One, um, environmental groups particularly um, raised the flag that this road would cut through some of the last remaining wild lands of Florida, some of the last rural parts of our state. So it, it would cut through critical panther territory in South Florida. Um, this projected area, right? And um, the kind of the armpit of Florida, the Western Gulf Coast side, that's prime old Florida territory where you've got these small rural communities that just have unbelievable personalities and really capture what it means when you say old Florida. So this was on our radar immediately. Um, we advocated strongly against this bill. Unfortunately, it passed. It was a priority of the legislative leadership in our state. Um, and so since then, we've been, we were asked to be part of the transportation task force process. So we were asked to be part of the um, conversation and discussion about what, what these roads would look like. And so the entire time we made sure we were a voice for growth management um, and, and shared, you know, for every one of these three roads, here are the impacts, what this would mean for the local governments, um, taxpayers, the environment. And so we participated in that process over the past couple of years. Um, and now today we are still working on um, a way to, to, to alleviate the impacts of these roads. I'll point out they were, um, the way they came to be was very different from other major transportation projects. Usually transportation projects originate in the state transportation agency, but this project came from the legislative side. It was kind of a mandate, you know, you'll, you'll, you will build these roads. 
So that's a lot of information there. Um, but that's that's our big project right now. Um, one of the big things we're focusing on and, and focusing our advocacy on. It's highly important that like, even if you don't win every time, that there is someone that is opposing and taking the conservatist uh, side in this. So thank you so much for doing that. We are coming up towards the uh, end of this conversation. So imagine that someone is listening to this. What can they as an individual do to do something to help save special places and communities in Florida? Great question. So I have two answers to that, just like I had a two-pronged answer in the beginning. One, for people in Florida, especially if you're a resident of Florida or if you're someone thinking of moving to Florida, um, my advice is get involved with your local, so your state or your city or county um, planning and zoning process. Subscribe to the email alerts about planning and zoning decisions. Um, That way you're in the know about what next development or project your local government is planning. Um, Oftentimes, by the time citizens hear about these things, it's too late, you know, a decision has been approved. And so I encourage you to dig in a little deeper in the civic process, right? Learn more about what's happening and who's making decisions. And also to that point, every five to seven years in Florida, um, local governments are required to update their comprehensive plan. So get involved in that process if you're in Florida. And if you're not a Floridian, international, you're living, you know, anywhere in the world, something I've been reflecting on during this pandemic myself is talk to your neighbors, um, think about what parts about your community and your neighborhood, you know, you value that you might not have thought much about. I think we're, a lot of us have been stuck at home and spending more time on walks around our neighborhood or, you know, spending time in local parks. So I just encourage you to, to be more reflective on what makes your immediate home, your immediate, you know, hometown space special. Um, I know that's a bit more abstract, but I think it's really important and can help you establish what you want to save and protect in your community. Beautiful. And for me, it's not abstract at all. Um, If I don't take care of the stuff in my neighborhood, then who is going to do it? And you're also saying that I have the power to do that if I take action uh, towards Uh, yeah the local government where i live so thank you so much for that tip and Haley, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today i very much appreciate it absolutely emil thank you so much and hope you have a good rest of your week (laughs) thank you and uh, for you listening if you enjoyed this conversation press subscribe on youtube or your podcast app because that is showing the algorithms that this is important so more people and floridians can learn about what we can do to save our special places and build better communities in Florida. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. What is great.com? That is the most common question that we get. And the shortest answer I can give you is that we are a company that is moving money from the online casino industry and donates it to charities that is helping the environment. The long answer, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you today. But if you're curious, Definitely Google whatisgreat.com to learn more.